Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to a video. This is a new series of videos that I'm gonna be doing that are called Hot Takes. Hot Take is basically, we're gonna focus in on one single comic book, uh, theoretically one um, artist, and um, just enjoy how killer they are at um, the craft of drawing a comic book. Uh, we look at a lot of different art on this channel, and I think it's incredibly important to uh, respect the um, the level of ability that it takes to draw a book. Um, and uh, today we're going to look at Stuart Immelman and uh, Marte Gracia's work um, on uh, all new X Men. So, quick housekeeping: if you haven't checked out my Patreon, please check it out. I have over 600 videos up yesterday. In fact, I uploaded a 53-minute video on drawing heads, uh, facial expressions, and uh, yeah, for one dollar you get full access. This is the last month that it's going to be a dollar, so you may want to check it out. Um, there's close to 800 posts and over 600 videos there, uh, and it, it tends to lean towards educational content, uh, and there is entertainment there, of course, as well. All right, and then also, I want to plug Blaster Kid. If you haven't signed up for the pre-launch page, get ready, because things are going to start to heat up as we move into January. The rest of this month, uh, everything is building and mounting, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, if you haven't checked out um, the live streams that I do on Wednesday, Kelsey Shannon and I do a weekly uh, series uh, that's been very, very popular, um, where we go over individual artists, and uh, we're actually... Um, crushing concepts right now as we speak <laughs> for tomorrow's live show so please check out kelsey's channel and then uh, tune in tomorrow for our live stream all right let's get to this Stuart immelman is incredible i have been a fan of his since um i'm gonna say around 2000 i uh i definitely knew his work before he did superman and he came over to dc and did some superman work i had definitely seen something uh, a little bit before that but what was interesting is researching this video i found out that stewart has been working professionally since around 1989 which i actually found a bit shocking because i had no idea he had been around that long but um he is credited um for uh, some stuff in 1989. So, all right, let's get to this. This is a beautiful book. I've been looking at these um, in my downtime, um, and uh, his whole body of work is incredible, but uh, this is a good issue. So let's get to it. Really, really lovely color, uh, a cover, um, and I can't say enough great things about uh, Marte Gracia's uh, color work. I think that he is fantastic. I actually thought it was a girl, um, and then happened to see a post on... Um, Instagram <laughs> or uh, Twitter and I saw him and I was like whoa 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 so there is actually um, Jason Keith did some colors in this book but um, and also let's give credit where credit's due we've got Ray Wade Vaughn Graw Badger and Craig Young inkers and uh, it's crazy I'll be honest sometimes when I look at this work I, I would assume that it was done digitally it's so precisely done um, but apparently it's not but uh, yeah it's so efficient looking that uh i swear there's pages where i go that's gotta be digital right like the blacks are so black on the pages but it's it could be that it's drawn on rough board a rough board will really really soak up black and give you beautiful beautiful um black reproduction smooth board can as well but smooth board tends to sometimes have a little bit more this is ironic it has it has a different kind of tooth that makes your line sometimes a little more pixely but um yes yeah, Stuart does incredible camera shots he has an economy of line and yet it is very very detailed at the same time it's a very interesting combination of things he he creates dramatic lighting the color cues seem to respond to his um the, the colorist responds to his color cues i should say quite well and uh i just i'm constantly impressed by what this guy does yesterday we were looking at um for my patreon the the head drawing video was um kevin mcguire and there's some similarities between kevin mcguire and um stewart but look at this shot of beast I guess old school beast the young beast 
like look at the way that he renders the figure it's so bouncy and juicy and i mean his facial expressions are always killer but look how simple this is this is what i'm talking about he he will bounce back and forth between stuff that you could argue is really cartooning to stuff that feels like more uh i i call it like comic book not realism realism has a different vibe but you know it's it's like uh alan davis or those kind of artists um kind of style very very cool inks these uh panel borders are quite interesting i would assume it's in reference to the retro um sort of flashbacks like like when we're seeing this on the page i'm gonna i'm gonna say that that um the two worlds are colliding so it's a symbolic um sort of uh gesture of of beast being able to see himself in his younger state but you know beautiful staircase just great colors it's all really really good love this guy's stuff oh yeah this hospital scene these are tough shots to do he does it really really well this was it's funny this was one of the first issues of this stuff that i saw in fact because i remember this scene and going okay this is going to be really good i love the way that he lights the costumes it's very kind of adam hughes um to, to me which adam obviously has his own set of uh influences but it's a very efficient way to light like spandex i love the way he constructs the anatomy with these big chunky shapes in fact let me uh sorry i was gonna switch to my stylus um but yeah let me show you this really quick so he does this thing with his anatomy which is really cool is you can really feel the edges do you see these nice connecting pieces it's it's all real juicy and chunky so it's got a, there's a lot of form to it you know this feels like a three-dimensional toy that you could just like literally pull this out but it connects so well to this and this connects so well to that but um yeah he gives you really really beefy shapes so you can kind of sink your teeth into and then those nice thick blacks around them uh, really make them like nice but Again, you can just see these forms. You see that? This just comes over. It's really, really good. Great stuff. It was interesting. I saw a city shot that he had done um, in an issue this morning, and uh, this is a great storm. Um, I love that. It's awesome. Uh, and, uh, God, he had done all these billboards, um, that were cr crazy. Um, it was really, really neat. Man, this is awesome. Yeah, so this has a little tiny bit of, like, an Adam Hughes vibe to it in a really, really cool way. Adam does this. That's a real classic Adam thing with the um if skin's touching skin it will blend into each other so you see he breaks the lines apart um it works really really well it's a little bit easier to draw and look the reality is is i, I tell this to my patrons all the time uh when you're drawing hands you you definitely need to get good at drawing hands but many times hands are just a representation of a hand and it's more the gesture of the hand than literally drawing every finger and sometimes if you do draw every other finger do you see how this is more of a gesture if you really focus on what he drew here it looks a little bit odd and even broken but um you know in real life your flesh will kind of blend in and it really is it really is kind of more of a silhouette um and if if uh like as a for instance even though this is a small figure but um you know if he would have drawn every finger and had the pinky in and all that it probably wouldn't look right so it's just something to consider if you can get the general gesture of a hand down um then just judiciously uh place more detail this is great too man this is i love this shot and the way that he did the jacket is actually very very cool I've been dealing with a character in the heavy metal story that wears a, a leather jacket and um it's a lot of different ways to handle it i mean he's got like a seam that actually runs through the jacket which is kind of interesting and also even has its own little style and another well i, I think that's a pocket but uh it's an interesting cut to the jacket so when you're working with 
fabric and materials, you want to actually kind of think about how it pieces together. He clearly had a very specific jacket in mind. Um, you know, and if you were going to draw a leather jacket out of your head, there's a pretty good chance that unless you've owned a leather jacket, you wouldn't have had all this attention to detail. So even the placement of the buttons and if it zips or folds over like this to me, maybe buttons underneath. I'm not saying that it does, but it almost looks like a piece of fabric that, that drapes over the whole thing. So anyway, and again, really, really beautiful colors. I... I I can't say enough nice things about Marty's stuff, um, and obviously there was two colors on this book, but I hadn't really s s put together a name and then the work, but I, I, as I looked at Pepe Larraz's stuff, I started to go, man, who is this colorist, because this is really, really badass stuff, um, and uh, now I'm a fan, I, I would seek out anything that... Uh, He's coloring just to check it out. But again, this is just a gorgeous two-page spread. And we talked about this in the other Stuart Immelman um, uh, video that I did maybe a month or so ago. I'll put I'll put it in the description box along with the other links that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. But um, this is real, real nice inks right here. Um, but um, the, there's some pretty heavy-duty double-page spreads with a lot of panels in these books. Um, we've got, you know, sort of a splashy full bleed panel here but you know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten panels plus that so it's it's quite a bit of work this has got a little bit of a kevin Nolan vibe um oh, this is nice i love silhouette panels um i don't find them to be a lazy or a cheat i think it's a really really cool effective storytelling device and in fact um I really enjoy them. <laughs> I think it gives your eye an opportunity to take a break if you're really putting a lot of detail on the page. And uh, again, this is just beautiful. What a sense of scale. Boy, you turn the page and you see this, and it's just awesome. This little tiny figure right here is just great. Let me pull that out. But man, that is awesome. That looks like right out of like a really kick-ass video game or something. And this is just all super cool. And again, this is a perfect example of, I want to run around in this room. I want to check it out. I want to go down this hallway and see what's down here. I'm curious of where this leads. And it just looks very, very awesome. Are there more guards and scientists in the lab? Who knows? But man, it really just takes you away when you see something drawn as beautifully as that. And the lighting on it is just gorgeous. Dude, it was so cool. It's funny because I'm so acclimated to doing longer videos. The idea of a 10 minute video is I actually am going to have to sort of hustle um, to some extent. This is a real nice page. Um, but, uh, you know, yesterday the video that I shot for Patreon was 53 minutes, like I said. And uh, that doesn't even seem like a long video to me anymore. I mean, it was, I knew that it was going long. But, uh, and here's another double page spread with just a bazillion panels. This is great right here. Man, look at that. The lighting on that face is just so cool. Man, just beefy, beefy anatomy. It's interesting because he really makes her face at a certain size super cartoony. Um, I mean, I think it always kind of is like this has a little bit more of like the Terry Dotson, Adam Hughes vibe. Um, but uh, yeah, when he gets it to a certain style, it's it's interesting because there's a, a thing that I refer to. I call it kind of like the Mignola rule book. And I've, I explain this to people that are learning to draw and taking lessons from me. Patreon does actually have lessons and reviews, um, which are well worth doing. Um, but uh, yeah, like for Mignola, Mignola has a certain size head that once he draws a head at like, say, this size in a panel, the eyes become just dots. And, and maybe mouths start to drop out. So if you can create a little bit of a rule book for yourself, and you know, look, obviously in art, there's no rules. People love to tell me that. Um, but uh, you, you, need a, you need an approach and, and, a, and a concept behind how you handle things, or you're gonna overdraw all the time. But yeah, you know, at some point, maybe pupils drop out of your eyes. If you get to a certain smallness of a face, you don't draw pupils anymore, or you're going to draw the mouths um, more simplified. And, and as you work up, you know, like here's an example, like these little faces right here. And, you know, 
can have some wiggle room with it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a hard and fast rule, but all those little things are going to help you keep your work more consistent. And consistency, I found, is probably one of the hugest, um, besides being able to draw, just generally speaking, consistency is gigantic for uh, comic book art. You really, really have to stay on it. Um, and that boils down to proportions. It's spatial relationships between the objects that you draw are going to keep the characters looking consistent. If she has nice full lips, they need to be nice and full all the time. If her nose is a tiny button nose and it sits up a little bit higher on the face, you know, you can't start dropping it down in some panels where, where she's looking more um, like, a, like a hangdog expression, they call it. Get another nice down shot. And again, these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I noticed with the other issues I was looking at, there was a lot of six panel pages, and it was. Uh, I find it interesting to see how artists utilize the space that were allotted for a comic book page. As you get more panels, you obviously have to be more judicious with uh, the space. But I there was a page that I saw this morning where he had filled up a pretty big area like this. And he had th three panels here. So he squeezed in four panels just in the top half of the page and then was able to squeeze in another four. So it was an eight panel page, but what was interesting is we did get a half of a page size drawing on the page, which, which to me gave me the size relationships that I want on a page. Because one thing that we talk about and um, is the two inch drawings where everything that's a point of interest is approximately one to two inches. So you don't want to have a ton of pages where everything kind of has the same relative size um, because it does get a little bit sort of one note. Comics should be dynamic. You know, you should have something kind of big and some stuff that's small. Really, really will benefit your pages. All right, we got to hustle. Wow, look at that beast is awesome. Jeez Louise. This dude draws so good. Look at that arm. And the chest. Man, that is awesome. That is a great hand, too. I love big, meaty, meaty hands. That's really, really good, too. Beautiful colors. It's like, man, he really keeps it kind of um, classic colors there, but then he gives a little bit of woo. <laughs> this is nice. The different rooms are getting different kind of light going on inside, like different, you know, maybe the light's off in this room and it's the hallway outside the room is giving it just a little bit of ambient light in there. You never know, friends. This is, this is how artists think. Oh, dude. He did, it was, a, it's funny is there was another page that was probably my favorite thing that I saw this morning. It was a tight headshot like this. And it was almost the same exact color palette and it looks so good, but it's this blood red to a little bit of a bluish sky up here, this hot stuff here, and then this kind of very murky green. I thought it was a really, really nice, nice look to it. But yeah, this is just such great looking art. She's pretty, looks good. Let's just zoom in a little bit and check out the eyes. Pretty simple pupils. It's got a nice Yeah, it looks good. I was I was just checking out. So he doesn't draw the eyelids, uh meaning, you know, like the second lid. Sometimes people will throw that in. It's sort of a you know you want to be careful about putting too many lines on girls' faces. So as much as you think you're kind of like maybe like doing the right thing, um like here he's got oops, sorry. Here he's got the eyelid. You can see the upper lid sort of interacting and even a little bit of the eye socket thing. But you start putting like lines under girls' faces, it can really start to add some age. So you definitely want to be mindful of that. The storm, he draws are so good, man. That's really, really nice. Here you go. Here's an example of a very simplified uh, shot. Okay, we're heading to the end of this. I hope everyone enjoyed this. What was it? It was a hot take. <laughs> so, all right. Have a great day. We're going to wrap this up with a few more. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Love the colors on that, too. Dude, that's nice. 
big juicy shadow on her. This looks great. Man, Stuart's awesome. We'll definitely revisit Stuart. So are you, if you have any recommendations for a hot take, you let me know. can be anything. American comics, manga, European graphic novels. Obviously, if it's a graphic novel, we're probably not going to be able to get through the whole thing in 10 minutes. So anyway, have a great day. Please smash the like, and I will see you tomorrow with Kelsey live, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be there. All right, thanks. Bye.